This podcast may contain adult language and spoilers. Viewer discretion is advised. What is up? It is May 13th, Thursday. My name is JP. I'm here with T. D, Tyler DeFazio, and Nate the Great, Mortimer. How you guys doing? What's, what's up, JP? Yeah, J. Not much, man. <laughs> That's what they call me in high school, man. It's uh, trying to throw back. Did they really? Yeah, absolutely. So Actually, my, uh... they call me oh, everything ahead, but my first name. So it's like Perez or JP. I guess that's the, well, the bane I... of being a John. When I played uh, when I played soccer, they used to call me Big D, and I think that as culture progressed, my coach realized, hmm, maybe we shouldn't be saying this in a private. It's actually Christian crazier school. that they found it more acceptable when you were younger, and then as you grew older, it's, it's just yeah, I don't know. They changed the Big T, which didn't have the same. No, I mean the D it, has but... the double, you know, triple yeah. actually. You know what I mean? The Fazio. <laughs> defense that's what i mean i I played defense that's That's it it made sense but yeah anyways um we are here again this is episode 1.5 a little bonus episode here um mass effects comes out tomorrow 9 a.m i think east coast time we're all pretty excited for it we're gonna go through some final thoughts uh in preparation for the madness uh did you want to start with the tier lists that we were looking at yeah, I, I mean, obviously we're gonna set up this list in a in a very very scientific way. I figured. Yeah, it's right? all like, science I here. Mean, Absolutely. This is this is something where we're gonna essentially rank all of the the crewmates in a way that every single Mass Effect player will agree with a hundred percent. Absolutely. There's gonna be zero controversy, it, and yeah. uh, nobody's gonna be upset because I, people of these series they never get upset. They're completely reasonable. You post on Twitter and it's like a click it and forget type of thing. So absolutely, it fosters enlightening discussion. Um, so how do you want to do this? Do we go from the bottom up? Maybe we'll start with D tier. We go around the table, just talk about how we forgot about all of these characters, and then work our way up. Yeah. So I mean, I, I was thinking, um, and fear, feel free to disagree. Like I, I, maybe we just go through the characters. Like so, we we have a, a website up. It's kind of uh, actually we should probably give credit to whoever made this thing. Tier maker. Thank you, <laughs> Horse Bongo, for creating yeah. this. Oh uh, my boy, this tier list. my boy Horse Bongo. <laughs> Shout out. Good stuff. Uh, but we ha- we have all the characters uh, across all three games, and then I mean we could probably just start shouting out names. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Like, like I'm just that. gonna go down this list here, and that'd be so be absolutely shocked at where we placed them and. For instance, if I say like Thane, and then we argue our position on like where we think he should be. Sure. Um, Great. I, I have a feeling we're going to uh, we're going to team up on Nate a little bit, so we'll have to think of a way to kind of yeah. Nate is notoriously little, <laughs> little uh, notorious for bad takes. That is definitely one thing. So why don't you start us off, Nate? Why don't you give us a character, and we uh, can go around the horn here and tell you why you're wrong. So give me two seconds, and uh, we can hear why I'm right. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, take a quick look at the Discord as I share my screen and bring up okay. the tier list. Oh man, look how uh, wow! This is I wish this was a video podcast because this I know, would be right? okay. This would be good. This kind of spoils right, everything, so we, but we hey, we're looking at it. On Nate's stream for everyone. <laughs> everyone <listening laughs> has a tier list up. And, it's a good uh, thing they can't see, man. The outrage would begin. We'll go ahead and we'll uh, well, stick especially everybody now. down here. Nate is currently putting all characters on D tier. This is a bold Nate, strategy, Nate Cotton. hates this game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll play a game of Escape the D tier. Okay. Or this is the uh, big D Escape the big D. Tier. Yeah, exactly. The big D, man. My God. Side note, if that name stuck, I have no doubt you'd be playing professional soccer right now, but I mean, professional soccer in uh, the state of Pennsylvania isn't, you know, out of the the picture. 
I think they're the hounds, not even wolves. They're hounds. Oh, yeah, they are. Nothing vicious. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing vicious. Uh, We're going to move on from that one. All right, buddy. Who are we starting with? Uh, I mean, Edie's chilling right here. But to be honest with you, I I don't think she moves too much. Uh, I personally Does she escape the D tier. Hate uh, the idea of the the AI getting its own body and coming to life. Uh, I don't like Vision uh, from you know the Marvel universe, and uh, it's the same kind of deal. I think it's just dumb that the robot gets a body and all of a sudden it's some like you know BA cyborg that follows you around and is like, okay, here's some heels. Interesting. Okay, Tyler, Yikes. give me okay, a retort so, to that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, let me let me double check my list, but I'm I'm fairly certain I put Edie at least up to C tier, if not B. I also um, brought this up. So yeah, I had her in, I had her at C tier. Look over there. Uh, a quick summary of each of their involvements in the campaign. If you need a reminder, there's Edie's. Uh, so we, I don't I know if at? we necessarily need to. Re- I, I think yeah. this is all based off of our own like recollection of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so we play it and we see how wrong we were or right. So, so I understand you guys didn't like Edie. It, me, it, me as a, a kid, younger, younger Tyler. Um, I actually liked Edie. I thought it was kind of nice that Joker, like, had a love interest. Like, I mean, he he was very much in love with the ship before it had a personality right and then <laughs> if, if you look at the kind of the arc at least from what i recall is where he's like not super into her and then you know he comes around up to the point of like okay well he can't you know bone his spaceship let's give her a body type of type of thing but i thought it was nice i thought it was like a good good way to wrap up joker's story arc i mean when you think about it he can't really do too too much Tyler, did you, you have some uh, lonely teen years because i'll be honest with you uh i don't remember anything about Edie, and joker's love interest with the ship was not enticing enough for me to remember it uh i mean age. i dude i'm a romantic i'm a romantic at heart i i just think everyone should find their everyone match. and everything know. should find whatever floats their boat yes see i was very progressive back in my my early teen years yeah, i was gonna say it is 2021 i'm pretty sure we could just have joker you know, bang the ship at this point, right? For sure. I mean, hey, like it's it's essentially the same thing. I thought Edie was uh, kind of that witty robot. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't a cliche, but I thought she had some good lines. I thought it was um, like you know, you guys don't remember whenever it was just like, oh, I'm going to take over the the world or take over the ship or something like that. Whenever you ask her different things and talk to her, and she's like, oh, that's a joke. Yeah, no, nope. absolutely. Cool. Here. All right. Yeah. No, no, I do, I do, I do. I swear. So here's so I'm, the not, thing. I'm not saying I'm not saying she's a great, great character, yeah. you know, especially off the roster. But I would, me personally, I put her up one, just for the record. For, I'm for okay C-tier. being outvoted here okay. to keep her in D tier. No, I, I get that. I can totally understand it. So my position on this is pretty similar to Nate's. I I kind of don't like that trope either very much, but um, I did like like Ed. Um, as an AI, like when she was introduced in two, from what I remember, like she does have good lines. She's pretty funny sometimes or whatever. But when she got a body, it was just weird. The whole Joker thing just didn't do it for me. It was just super weird. I was like, I I liked it better when Joker hated her. You know what I mean? It was like, sure. That was a good uh, relationship. And then he falls in love with her. It was so weird. I don't know. It was cringe to me. I, She's a D tier. She's a I D mean, tier. Hey, I'm not. I will not fight you on this. Like this is our, our combined list right? of what Perez said, but also I remember the story of Doctor Chakwas better than I remember Edie. That's fair. I mean, I mean, like, hey, I'm not going to fight you guys. Like, that's we will keep her D tier. I assume this is going to be a, like a culmination of all three of our. Yeah, lists, we can right? vote. Like, I guess. Yeah, like an average yeah. of the votes, sure. Okay. So, we'll do we skip there. all of these and just drop Garrus where he belongs? Uh, yeah, oh, we can jump, get it out of the way. Just dropping right off the top. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right next to her, Garrus. So basically, better... what we're telling you is, if you're one of like the three people who might actually listen to this, aka our, like significant others, um, if you disagree, oh, you're wrong. Not listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is not the demographic here. But uh, continue. If you disagree with Garrus and S tier, you're wrong. I mean, it's that, that not, is actually, all memes aside, that is literally 
the only thing that's a fact at, at this point. Uh-huh. Right? I mean, there's just no one who could say he's not S tier. I mean, you said it in our last episode, John, like, you can't, like, he is the best, like, bro companion. Like, even when you're looking at, like, things like Marcus and Dom and stuff like that, like, Master yeah. Chief and Cortana, like, Absolutely. Garrus is just. Garrus good. doesn't go across and, like, all three. suicide in a truck. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. he's better than that. How excited so are you the you first time this, you like... see him after you know his supposed uh, mm-hmm. disappearance and you see a Turian with a face shield sniping off the roof of a building at a bunch of gangsters and you're like, I hope to God this is Garrus. Yeah. I think we all yeah. knew in our hearts that this uh, oh, is 100%, too cool to not be Garrus. But we knew that it's a game and they very well would play with our heartstrings like that just to introduce, you know, a grunt into the party versus it being Rex. That's true. Oh. I mean, okay. Well, let's not skip ahead. Yeah, it's gonna be a little <laughs> hot take coming up, but uh, folks are Garrus, yeah, two. absolutely. I mean, and at that point, it's like pretty early on, right? You're at Omega, and I don't think you really have any other companions. Like the first two you get are Garrus and uh, Morden. So, yeah, we don't really know what to expect. So, yeah, I guess it was a bit of bit of bit of a surprise, but. Um, it was a hundred percent a surprise for me yeah. to be completely honest. Like I obviously, you know, you see him in the, the, I'm sure I, you know, you saw him in the trailers and the, even the art and stuff like that. But whenever we were going for there, I did not put two and two together. I, re- I remember this very clearly as a, as a kid playing this where, you know, you go in and, and I thought I was just going to, it was gonna be like a boss battle. Like I had to kill somebody. And then you see Garrus up there just sniping dudes. And, uh, that was one of the most meaningful, like that was like I, probably the big moment in Mass Effect Two that I was like, okay, I'm in, like type of thing, and that was fairly early on mm-hmm. to your point. Yeah. Um, but I mean, at, he's he's S tier. Like honestly, even if you go in, and I know I joked about like, hey, this is like a definitive list. I don't think another person, like if you took all the Mass Effect fans in the world, I don't think you get a a, a person higher than than Garrus. No, absolutely. Like, yeah, you take an average, it's going to be close to perfect right i mean yeah just, like you'll have people that it's like they're too cool for garris and whatnot but i i think this is an easy lock uh i would say my favorite garris moment if we're gonna go down that route is like the last one you get with him or one of the last ones where you're at the citadel and you're like throwing soda cans off the side and shooting them <laughs> something yeah. like that it was just like the ultimate bro moment i was like this is amazing I just had a smile on my face the whole time it was so good uh, he's so well written. Just he's like so cool, but he's kind of like awkward in spots too. You know, depending on what the situation is, it's just so amazing. Let me ask you this though: if because I think we all played just regular Shepard, I don't think any of us played Fem Shep. But would you like? Would he be the person that you tried to romance if you played through as a as a female? Ooh, because um... I would. Me personally, I would say no. Really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I I want him to be just that. I was about to say, yeah, he's friends best in. friend com- companion. Yeah. Yeah, I probably would. I think. I think I probably would. Like the in two, you don't really get that because uh, he's like not an option, right? But I don't think. But in three, he is, and I think it's written pretty well. So I probably would. Yeah. I mean, hey, fair enough. I mean, if he's that good of a bro, dude, and you're a girl, you have to marry this guy. Like, you're not gonna let him get away, right? That's insane. So you're saying I mean, he's I the best friend at the be. every or at the end of every romantic comedy kind of deal? Um, I'd have to watch one of those to understand what trope you're talking about. I have no idea. Like, it starts off as a best friend, and then yeah, it starts off as like the best friend who's there for them through all the bullshit, and then uh, you know. All of a yeah. sudden, at the end of the movie, what everybody wants is what they get. Yeah, I mean, yeah, kind of like that, except he's just, like, the best person ever. And uh, you just lock that down. I, I was absent for, like, the first, like, official rendition of this. How how PG to PG-13 are we getting here? Just because uh, I, I self-muted last time. Uh, self mute. Oh, for for the swears. Uh, no. I so I actually have a disclaimer on the front of this one saying that there's adult language and or spoilers. Fuck. We're good. Perfect. <laughs> God damn it, Ty. All right, Nate. Who's who's next? Let's go down. I mean, Javik. Who? 
Oh, uh, apparently, okay. I'm the only one who would leave him in D tier because once again, oh, the only thing I remember about him is the fact that he caused a big like brouhaha for being DLC. I don't remember anything or remember caring about his story at all. I will make a prediction right now. This is a bold prediction. He will move the most on Nate's tier list. Absolutely. And maybe the most out of all three of us. Like for Nate's tier list. You know what I'm saying? Do you want to give me a, a rundown of his story, yeah. Junks? I honestly don't remember it being any good. I don't want to surprise it. Or I don't want to spoil it for you. But essentially, he's the last Prothean. He was like... I which, I, like they, which I think is a dumb concept. Because oh, they're no, supposed to be all extinct. Concept. So go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, so they crystallize him, right? Because they know what they're going to lose to the Reapers. So he's Captain and... America. No. Yeah. Not at all. Absolutely not. It was it was done by choice. I remember he was like a, a group of like scientists, right? And they froze a bunch of the scientists whenever you find him. And yeah, he's a soldier. A soldier? I thought it was scientists. They I could be both. wrong. But they basically like had the pods set up to shut down one by one as like the need arose and like power failed and stuff because it took longer and longer than they thought to like resurrect them. And I remember he must have been like the only one like they he was like on I think it was he was whenever you find him, he's on like his last day or something. Like it is the most like coincidental moment for you to run across this dude. And I don't know. I don't remember just, that. I think it's... I could be wrong. Like, it's yeah, been a while know. since I've played this. Like, I was still living with my parents, and Rochelle used to lock me out of my bedroom to play Mass Effect if she made it home from school before I did. Like, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my thing is, like, I'm not... I won't discount the fact that it is a little bit uh, coincidental. Like, I'll give you that, for sure. And to be fair, it has been a while since I played this, so, you know, maybe my my you know, thought of Javik in, in the interactions with him is a little jaded. Like I actually had him as my number one A tier, like on the cusp of going into S tier. Mm. And the reason why I originally put him there is because, you know, when I recall like the conversations with him and, and just his attitude towards everything, um, I thought it gave a pretty good like perspective, right? So up to this point, we were theorizing on everything with Protheans and, and people would talk about them and, and stuff because they were t- supposed to be extinct. So then, EA comes in and they, they inject this character. It's like, okay, hey, he'll tell you exactly what they were thinking here. He'll tell you exactly their mentality and their their motivations and, and everything. And he'll tell you just how dumb he thinks everyone is. Yeah. And it's it's just – it's a cool kind of juxtaposed to everything where you're – you know, you up to this – like I said, up to this point, you have people that are just very, very solid in their beliefs. And then here comes this like essentially frozen caveman – but what if the caveman was like smarter than anyone around him? See, I uh, dislike that whole concept because I like the the unknown mystery. I like the fact that like with Mass Effect specifically, the whole thing is about this ancient race that wants to wipe out all these civilizations and succeeded. And you're trying to like learn from the ruins of this civilization. And all of a sudden the key to like unlocking this comes right at the end where it's like too late. But, like, I don't know. I I just, I'd rather, I I feel like the mystery of, like, the world and, like, their universe and the Protheans being dead was a a great thing. And they should have left that, you know, uh, without, they shouldn't have tied any of the loose ends. They should have left that nice and frayed. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, mean, hey, I I can understand that for sure. I just think they handled it so well. So it's not even, like, his story. Like, I know you hate, like, whatever, like, the frozen thing last of his race whatever but it's just his character like he's this like jaded dude like his whole race is dead but he's like he has a good sense of humor still like he has one of the, some of the greatest lines like really funny i remember um and he's a soldier as well so that's a really interesting thing because like he's not like a scientist he can't tell you everything about their race about their technology you know what i mean like there i remember there's points that's like yeah i don't really know how this works right like i shot guns for a living so it's still for me kept a lot of the mystery because he wasn't like a super expert um but there's some things where you get more light shed on it and it was really funny it was like oh you guys thought we did that that's like totally wrong you guys are idiots like i i just remember those moments and i thought it was really cool so i thought they handled it really well in my opinion 
right. and they, so, they do leave a little bit of real sorry like they, they do leave a little bit of room too right because this is one character out of an entire species right so like his thoughts his emotion it's it's no different than like pulling one human out of our race and saying exactly. like okay everything this guy says is you'll never the get the entire, whole truth you know. with him right it's his perspective right. and he's even upfront about that he's like yeah i don't like you'll ask him something he's like i don't know like that's definitely some sometimes he'll say that so and to nate's point like if if they put that into like mass effect one or two that would have been maybe a little too soon yeah. for me. I think it was good at three where it's just, Hey, we know that this game is going to wrap up the trilogy. It's just giving you those little bits of detail, um, right. extra while wrapping in a really good, uh, quote unquote DLC character. Yep. Uh, yeah. So, so I have, but I, I can, I can drop them down. I can, <laughs> well, here's I the thing. Can, tier. You have them at A tier. Tyler, where do you have them? I had them at A. I had them at a tier. Okay. And I have them at D but I'm outvoted. So I say that puts him in a B tier just because I drop him down low enough that he's not a full A. That's fine. I'll I take that. Yeah. yeah. If he's, if he's like first on the B tier list, we'll see. <laughs> I don't, we'll see. That's, that's uh, do you really want to label them through. like first to last? I just, uh, we should. Yeah. There. Okay. Oh, uh, well we're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it. We got an easy one coming up here. Vega. He's chilling. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember anything about him either, other than he was feisty and he has like one good mission on the Citadel that kind of made me like care, but I don't even remember what that was. Yep. Uh, yep. Next. Uh, Caden. <laughs> he gets lots of headaches and he likes to be annoying. So I always saved Ashley, I think. So I actually don't know anything about Caden post one. <laughs> I am. Uh, I am right there with you. I would actually put Caden before Vega. <laughs> I uh, I put no him in C tier because you just can't get worse than Vega. Like doing nothing puts you above the characters that I actively dislike. You know, I, mean? I would like to I would like to call out that I love Freddie Prince Jr. as a voice actor. So this is nothing against him. It's just the character of Vega is not. Yeah, is not it was favorite. it was a huge swing and a miss. He was just terrible as a character. So Caden's whole story arc is he was like one of the first biotics with, I believe, like the Gen Gen 2 biotic chip. And he there was a lot of like issues with like that class. So think of it like, um, I don't know. I, I can't think of a good way to bring I mean, it like into Master perspective. Chief, right? But like Master Chief, except if Master Chief had like. Uh, well, I guess Master Chief had like the burns and stuff all over his body. That's why you never get to see his face because like underneath he's basically Deadpool, right? Uh, Caden's kind of like the same deal where he's got this chip that permanently is just making his life miserable. And it's him like, you know, fighting through it and being one of the first humans to actually be able to like mimic like the biotics and stuff of the other races. So he was kind of like... Uh, the star pupil of like the the space magic people but he was unfortunately like the guinea pig test run uh, of the successful batch so it's all about him like kind of going through and you learning a bit little bit about like the biotic experiments and stuff and unlike john who picks the soldier so he can use all the guns i really like the space wizard shit so caden was kind of a character i like and ashley was the person i sacrificed because she annoyed me just as much as caden but i at least was a little bit more in invested in caden's story because i like to learn about that side of the lore so caden would be a c for me as well interesting uh, okay i mean hey put him put him see i will, I will I'm, defer I'm cool to you since you talk to this yeah. guy <laughs> I was gonna say he he's been dead since yeah. Mass Effect One. <laughs> I didn't even so. know he could live. Honestly, this yep. is a little bit of a shock. I actually might save him. Um, I was thinking the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I might save him because yep. Ashley, like I've heard all her shit, and I don't care. So. I've done both, and Ashley in Mass Effect Two pisses me off so much. She's never living through the first game again. But she writes you an apology note, dude. <laughs> she she writes you a no? note. They doesn't, email doesn't it. do it for you. Actually, I, I think she only writes you a note if you banged her in the first one, actually. <laughs> Amazing. What about Jacob, a.k.a. Vega 2.0? Should, should we do Ashley yeah. next, since they're kind of tied together? Do you want to do Ashley I'm, next? I'm fine pushing Ashley to D tier, personally. I uh, I had her in C. Like, I think she has some redeeming qualities. She She's like the... Uh, 
you know, the family full of soldiers, right? Uh-huh. And uh, she had a bunch of brothers, I think. I kind of like that stuff. Any sibling stuff, I'm always a fan of. I, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So, I don't know. When she talks about, like, her, she's, like, big into her family and stuff. So, I was, I'm always down for that kind of thing. I think she's, like, a space racist. So, um, that's not, that's not good. She, like, hates it. Where'd you have her, Nate? I, I, her. I think I had her a D. Yeah. Did you have her D as well, Ty? I, I did have her a D, yeah. I, and, and uh, no, actually, I had she was oh, the wait, one. No, that's Perez's. I'm looking at the list. No, I had her I, C. I, uh, I had uh, Caden, Ashley, and Grunt at C. So with with Ashley, I was actually romance her all three games. Is my official really? like Paragon playthrough? Yeah, Holy I tried shit. to keep it like across the board, and it just did not pay off for me. No, dude, that's terrible. Can yeah, you romance and, her in two? Well, so no, and and that was kind of the thing, right? So it was like. I just kept it like I didn't go any like romance options or anything in two or three because it was just her. I'm pretty sure if I uh, guess you could do it in three, right? Yeah, you could do it. In I don't three, know. For sure. Yeah. I guess if you don't romance her in two. It's right. Like, then it's uh, available. Yeah. Right. I think that's how it works. Shows you a picture. I mean, of hey, her if you guys two. want her to see, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with C. Like, I mean, no, no, that's no, totally it's going to be D. You guys both had D, right? So I had C. Oh, keep keep her C. Are you sure? Do you have any yeah. good things to say about her? <laughs> no. Captain, my captain. That's all I remember about her. Oh, yeah. But see, like I remember something about her. And that's important. No, like, I remember a lot about ED, and I fucking don't like her. I remember nothing about ED, so she's automatically D tier. Same with Vega. Uh-huh. And then Jacob, who's sitting right there beside Vega, I just remember not liking him either. I remember him being really whiny. I, um,. Yeah, we can keep her in C. If we're moving on to Jacob, I have him in C as well. He um is a bad character, but for some reason, I just liked something about him. I thought it was cool. I had him at D. I couldn't remember a thing about him. It's like his whole dad thing. Remember, his dad's like a traitor or something. Sure. I think it's yeah. like the drunk dad scenario, wasn't it? Yeah, you go and uh, his dad dad got stranded on some planet and like took over and is feeding people oh that's right he's on the mushrooms. search for his dad he's got yeah. like the uh my parents left me you know i need to find and figure out what happened and then he finds out that his dad's like leading this colony and his dad's like kind of the bad guy but for a good reason kind of deal oh no, he's totally the bad guy he's like feeding them poison yeah so they but worship him i don't remember what like the point it was behind it but there's like I think there's Would like a, a small cake? moment where Jacob's kind of like okay with it. I could oh, he's be wrong. like, uh, "Hey, man, that's my dad. I haven't seen in twenty years. What should I do?" And I always told him, "Fuck him up." Actually, no, I told him to arrest. We like arrested him or something. Makes sense. Yeah, I yeah. think he's just a scumbag. I think he's just an awful person. The the dad. What what does that put us at, like, Jacob? We can leave him D again. Like D. everything you guys just said, I was like, okay, well, I mean, it's yeah, that's leave fine. Him D. That's fine. I mean, he's. He, but uh, let's. Uh, we got. I mean, we got to move him in front of Vega. Would you guys move him in front of Edie? I would. I had again. Him C, Edie right, is so. a full character. Yeah. Wow. Well, right. I don't know. I mean, it, the picture is Edie in the suit. So, like, you're, I mean, you're me, right. That's Technically, like, that's we, uh, we did say crewmates. Right, so that's only three, and that's when I liked her the least. So you're right, you're right. I'll take it. What that's about what uh, the Hound Zaid? Uh, I had him uh, B tier. I have him D tier because he's a soldier who sucked at being a soldier. He's a mercenary. He's no joke. One of the character options. From Mass Effect One, because it's what Spacer Street Kid and what was the the War Hero one where you yeah. leave like your squad to die. Zaid like was in that same situation, but instead of heroically winning some battle, he like just basically sacrificed everybody or lost like his group because he was a bad leader, and now he's got this chip on his shoulder because he let everybody die and he still sucks at his job. No, it's a redemption arc. Like Except it. he never gets redeemed. He does. He saves the world with us. The saves the world with us. Redemption. 
What? So I actually put it's Ziggy to, at C uh, because I thought his character was written well enough and acted well enough that I liked him as a character just yeah, because up to this point, we really didn't have too many like gruff kind of people, you know, not including like Rex and you know, Grunt and that kind of thing. But like he was he was kind of a, a just something different, which I thought was nice and kind of rounded out the party. I will say that when it comes to DLC, because he was also DLC, I think he was a pre-order bonus, if I'm not mistaken. I think he was. Re- I think he was marketed as a pre-order bonus, but as long as you bought the game brand new, you got him because he was like a code that came in the in like the insert. But he he is an example of not the greatest implementation of DLC where like he doesn't really in and I could be misremembering this, but it didn't seem like he integrated well with the the game proper and i think it's and because that, that's the big difference they between need to him and make Javik. it so that with him because this was i believe the first time they did it because he was mass effect 2 right they had to make it so yeah. that if people missed out on him they weren't really missing out so that they wouldn't right. get like too much backlash right. but then when you look at but when you look at javik that was so well integrated with things and he had so many different pieces of dialogue with different people and it changed based off of who you had like that just seemed like it was naturally in there where they almost ripped Javik out of the game just to monetize it versus right. something like Zahid where they just added extra stuff just to get that. And I think that's pre-order. what they were going for. And because Zahid went so well, they took that next step and that's when they, they got the negative reaction that they were expecting from Z- from Zahid the first time. I, which is I why think I Tyler's think absolutely he, right though in, in terms of Javik. I, to me, it's just so much content with him. Like, there's, like, a, even, like, a whole mission around him, right? So, it had to be, like, he was in the game, and then they were like, uh, we can make some money off this. And they took him out, right? Like, it yeah. had to be. I mean, hey, it, it, if it's not, and if, if it's closer to what Nate was saying, if, it's, if Zahid, like, if he paved the way for a character like <laughs> Javik, then no to way. me, that he is C-tier. Just Zahid to do it. <laughs> paved the way for all DLC characters, man. <laughs> I don't know. I like the Zahid. I'm... Yeah, I have him in B tier. It might be high. I just remember he it's he's like a classic mercenary, right? He just tells you the story about how he stole the back plate off of a uh uh what's it called? I can't a Krogan. You know what I mean? Like he's got like all this stuff in his room, it's like trophies from things he's done, like jobs he's done. I don't know. I'm I'm a little kid, I guess. I just think that stuff's cool. Like I mean, hey, like if if nothing else, the common theme here is I'm very excited to jump back in, re like remember all of these things, like maybe catch things I missed the first time around, or now that we're older and we have different perspectives on life, like I, I think it's gonna be very interesting to see. Yeah, that's the whole point of this too, like to see where these characters change, if they go up or down or stay the same, you know. Yeah. Uh, I actually forgot his whole soldier thing. I. I guess I just forgot all about that. I don't. Remember. I thought he was just like a mercenary, so I'll have to be on the lookout for that. So, uh, unpopular opinion time, uh, uh, Liara. Uh, this is gonna be our unpopular opinion, bro. I was, I was gonna <laughs> say, man, I, I think, yeah, I think you're you're right on the money. Why don't you go first you her, but... so we could soften the blow? I, uh, I I have her S tier because I think she's one of the coolest characters ever. Like, she's a super young scientist at the age of fifty two because their race lives for so long. She's considered a child. She's a person who's like on the verge of these big discoveries, but everybody's keeping her down. Uh, you know, she what her her mom or something was like a commando, uh, so she is kind of like straying away from that life. And then all of a sudden, you know, towards the end of the game, she's like, Oh, by the way, I like secretly run the world now. Like the Illuminati, like come at me, bro. Uh, I hear you. Very Nate character. Yeah, it does. (laughs) It does not surprise me. I, um, uh, brace for impact. I have her in C tier. Uh, here's the thing. She has some of the most work put into her, right. In terms of character development, like effort you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i just didn't like her character arc she starts off as this like really awkward shy scientist and you're like okay and then she morphs into this under dark uh like organized crime syndicate leader boss person who's 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just makes no sense. Like, with a person who doesn't have really good social skills, to go from that to that is, like, insane to me. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. I, I'm not saying it wouldn't make sense, but um, I did feel a little bit of a disconnect, a little bit of a gap there where it, it didn't make sense on how I perceived her as a character. Um, taking a step back now after times passed and kind of seeing what they were going for it, like, I get it. Um, so, I mean, I did have her at C tier as well. I would argue to put her up to A tier, though. I don't think that we, we need to pull her all the way back down if, if uh, Nate had her at S. And to be fair, I mean... We, we kind of know, like, all the ideas they put around here were, I think, good ideas, but... Well, the thing is, too, I like, remember in the first this... game, she really looked up to Benezia, right? Like, that was, like, her first, like, turning point of, like, oh, my goodness, like, everything that I've been, like, you know, taught as I grow up, or, like, these Reapers really had more of an effect on my life than, you know, uh, I realized even now, and... Uh, my favorite thing is whenever you first see her as the shadow broker, she says something like, you know, have you faced the Asari commando units or have you ever seen an Asari commando unit before? And then she's like, few humans have. And then you turn around and she's like giving you the, and she's giving some poor soul the same threat that Benezia, like her idol gave you back whenever you met her on. Uh, I oh my God. I just realized that. I just put that together. Holy shit. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh-huh. I never it's realized that cool. before. It's super cool. I know exactly uh, what scene you're talking about. Yeah. Uh-huh. Damn. That's crazy. So I, I think cool. in all honesty, two characters that are going to be going up in, or, or the biggest moves for me would be her and Rex. So I am looking forward to kind of reliving that story. And I honestly, I don't remember a lot of the DLC, um, like with the shadow broker and, and a lot of the stuff they came out with at three. So the shadow broker that content a lot could have it. not existed in Liara's shadow broker arc still does it for me. Nice. Okay. Interesting. Well, I mean, Hey, wow. I'm, I'm excited for yeah, it. I just, I'll, I'm, like, I'm happy with her today. I'm, I'm good with that. It's, it's just, I guess I would like to see more time pass for the transition. It seemed really quick. I guess. I don't know. I guess you did. There was a couple of years that passed, but like I said, dude, she doesn't know how to communicate with other people and then she's running like organized crime. That's crazy to me. That's a it's big the problem. Jump. Like it's the problem that TV shows have, right? Where like if you're, if you're watching a TV show and then any amount of time passes in your mind, those characters don't necessarily change. Like you, you have those characters in your mind and then you see them on screen and suddenly they're acting super different. It's the same thing with, you know, if you look, think about like Luke Skywalker and how he acted in the in the Last Jedi versus you know Return of the Jedi, like it, it's comprehending that that you know well, change in complete attitude and, and things is just tough. Well, yeah, I don't want to I don't wanna go down <laughs> that rabbit hole, but I'm just saying like it's it's tough to to wrap your head around that. Especially yeah. I know I, me personally, I had a, a problem with that, especially younger, where I didn't like change. I didn't like seeing uh, characters that I thought were one thing. And then if they acted differently, even if time passed, my mind just couldn't wrap around that. And it really, really, really turned me off. So now, again, taking a step back, seeing all the arguments that you made, Nate, like I'm going to look at this a little bit differently, which, uh, you know, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely open to it. I think she might move up for me as well. And I totally, I, I mean, I kind of disagree with you in terms of like my own philosophy. I do like character growth. I like character arcs. I like seeing people grow. It's just I was it was a bit jarring, I guess. Her her growth was not what you were expecting, which, you know, maybe a second look. I'm older now. I might enjoy it more. Um we'll just have to see. You know, I'm excited though. She she might be moving up quite a bit. I just really like the Asari race in general too. So I, I can't like... stand the Asaris. They're elves. They're space elves and they're OP, man. They're so <laughs> OP. How are they so OP? They live to a million. They can mate with anyone and they're always gonna be Asaris. They it's, they don't have to worry about like, any of the STDs or biotics. anything either because so they don't OP. technically do anything. They just copy your genetic code by like reading your mind and then they make yeah, their yeah, own they don't have, Yeah, they, they don't have to make – oh my god. They're so OP, man. Like nerf Asaris, please. It's so insane. Uh, I just think it's so cool. Meanwhile, you have the coolest race, the Krogans. Like, yeah, uh, you can't breed. You can't fucking do anything, man. You guys are shit. Do, like, do we want to finish off the the second Asari on this list real quick? Yeah, yeah. Before absolutely. we move on, I'm down. Samira, Samara, <laughs> Samara. Oh, where'd you? Uh, have I her forget name? what Nate I had. Her. I think I had her in A. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, you. Well, I know you guys have her low. But I I'm pretty sure I had her at A because I had Liara at S, you, and Liara were, and Garrus are my only S's. Yeah, you were talking about how much you liked her, so I I think she was higher. I had her in B tier, so it actually wasn't so far off. I'll be honest with you, Samara I would actually have lower. The only reason I had Samara higher is because I really liked the idea of more her like Arctic Yakshi daughter. The one who like she's like, I'll kill my mom and just kinda of pretend to be her on her on your ship. And EA Did you take her? Bioware was kind of no, you can't. But yes, you can. EA you can yeah, you can. Yes you can. Can you yeah, what? Yeah, you die. No, no, no. You can have her on your crew, I swear to God. Oh yeah, yeah. You can have her on your crew. I thought you said, "Can you bang her?" No, and no, I said, no, no. no. That's not all I you think can, about. You die. No, you die if you bang her. But you can have her on your crew. You right. can have her on your crew. Yeah, and she's Samara. That's all I'm saying. And that's where right. I was getting. Bioware and EA. Were that's like what I was lazy, asking you. Did you? And have they her didn't on your even. Crew? Yeah, mm-hmm. they don't even change the like the voice actor or the costume or anything. It's just the voice lines change, but like the conversations you have with Morinth and like she's basically like Jack without the emotional baggage. Like I get that that makes her less of a character. I just thought the concept of her of being like the Asari, like these people and their biotics are so amazing and she's a straight up serial killer and she's just biding her time on your ship. I like, cannot isn't believe you, you would take reason. her on your ship. She is fucking psychopath. That is insane, dude. Yeah, but I what thought I'm she was is, cool. Can you, can you not romance her and then it, it, you die and it's game over? Correct. I don't think so. I, yeah. I'd have to Google that. Yeah, you, you can romance her. I mean... Technically, what happens is, uh, I think it looks you like romance a black her hole during or something, the mission, and right? Just... If you do it during the mission, possibly, yeah. Like, however it is, but like you can die yeah, by she... trying to. Well, to S- Samara her. tells you the whole time, like, "Yo, she's gonna kill you." <laughs> right, and, and it's like, just uh, like, "Yeah, but is she gonna kill me? Kill me?" <laughs> hey, if I'm gonna die, you know what I'm saying. Uh... <laughs> so I had her at D D tier, and that was more of wow. just I felt like I had to put Liara at C. Um, it, honestly, from what, from what I would recall, I would actually flip them because I actually like Samara. I thought it was a, a more interesting character overall. Yeah, so but I I'm, I'm fine with her at B if if you guys are are on. Yeah, I had her at B. I actually hate her daughter. She's crazy and just wants to murder everything. She has no redeeming qualities at all. And uh, I thought Samara was cool though. I liked learning about the Justicars, like the her code. She lives in a really weird way, like kind of like a monk, but kind of like a, I don't know. She, oh, like, you're right. So if you survive the end of mass effect two suicide mission with her and decide to, you know, uh, have some fun, uh, she does murder you. Yeah. You get that far and you just die. That's insane. <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. You took her on your trip, man. That's crazy. She <laughs> does not give a fuck about you. Yeah, but I pulled I pulled a Tyler with Liara, so I actually did not know that because I did not experience that that yeah. portion. Well, that's good for you, man. I still think it's freaking cool though. The fact that they'll even do that to you is neat. Like, just in <laughs> yeah, general, to you. Yeah, the fact that they let her like you. Beat oh yeah, all that they put stuff. it in. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah so I agree. cool. But yeah, I, I would leave her day. I I like them but i also get that like my enjoyment of them is less about the character and more about like the role of the character or just the the cool shit that can happen because you have the character so i'm I'm okay with you guys dropping them down i just don't know where you want them i had a b i I thought b was good he's fine yeah i think that's good that's Uh, two up from what i had yeah she's solid Mr. i've lived a life of crime and now i'm crying because my son's trying to do it but he's really bad at it Thing oh, that's a little bit of a uh, watered was, down that's a, version. That's a little bit of a reduction, but yeah, I mean, so I had a, a Thane. Thane is A for B. I'm just throwing that out there, Same. like, yep. and that's that's like a almost S tier. He's a solid um, A. He's uh, he's my second person in A out of three. Oh. Like he he is on my custom box art <laughs> cover yes same uh i i just think that the way that they wrote him and the way like his species uh recalls things and uh, just the the whole like okay hey i'm terminally ill like all of that stuff i thought was just so interesting so well acted so well done um, I, had I just him thought at he B. was a really really cool character 
because of all of that stuff, except I hated the whiny son piece. Like, the assassin, I would have rather, you know, had him, like, the one mark that got away and it being, like, his final hunt versus, like, his kid being, like, a really shitty gangster. Um, but because you guys both have him at A and my only reason is like the one part of the arc I don't like, uh, I'd be cool with leaving him at A. Like he's good. I, I agree. I'm not super like in love with his son. Um, and like that kind of arc. I, I just think again with him as a character, that was enough for me to just be like, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Absolutely. Totally agree. Yeah. The son thing was annoying. I mean, it gives you perspective on why this guy's so depressed. Cause he made like a dipshit as a kid. Right. So <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. But uh dude even like the cinematography i remember specifically when you go into his room to talk with him there's like this angle and there's like this light behind him because he needs like a a warm environment or something like a a human environment it was just set up so good like it it like glows off his eyes and shit and then he recalls things i don't know just be on the lookout for that it is like the camera's so well done there and it just like hits you even harder when he's talking about like his fucking wife stepping in front as of long as his shit. ass is not in frame it'll still be that way i know it's gonna be a zero out of ten i can't even... i mean it's gonna be even more glowing uh glowing bits i know just it's gonna look the, su- it's gonna look so good i cannot wait it's gonna be yep. fucking fantastic but he's an amazing character everything tyler said totally agree what an amazing uh species to add because it was a new species so interesting mm-hmm recall everything in perfect detail i love those sequences where he just like rattles off exactly what happened and, and like kind of like a poetry. sherlock holmes like, yeah, like uh, robert like, downey jr yeah, kind of way I, it's so cool I, I really like that and he's just a badass he's like sensitive but he can like fucking kill you it's like really really great guy what about uh kitsumi her edgy hood and her flash in the pan <laughs> mission that was fun but then after so that, I, her character's like meh. I would actually ask if, like, I mean, so you guys actually played her? Okay, I uh, just learned her name five seconds ago. So Yeah, so I never a, played her. I, this is actually one piece that I don't know Same. where I would even ask, can we just keep her shrouded in mystery? Yeah, I, I do <laughs> not know who she is. I, like, know. I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't so, know where to put her. I, I don't know who she is. I guess she's, she's a Rose. DLC, yeah. She's Rose from Full Metal Alchemist. That that is my definition of her story arc. Except, well, she that spoils can, everything for me. She okay, well, do. doesn't for me. So, <laughs> yeah, just, what the fuck is is there a reason she should be out of D tier just from the fact that we don't know anything about her? I think she deserves C just because her her mission's fun, but her story arc is kind of bland. As long as she's before Vega, I'm good with wherever you want to put her. Is I Vega had her the bottom at D- of the. Of the barrel, he, he is my he is my bottom. Yeah, Poor Vega guy, would man. be my bottom too, just because I remember less <laughs> That's about a joke him because he it did. was a big deal that he was also gay. He's gay? No, he's not. I did not yeah, know that. You can romance him. Uh, no. All right, it's his it's his buddy that's gay, the pilot. You sure? Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm, Cheeseburger. Don't know. Cheeseburger. Mm. Cheeseburger. Okay, maybe, maybe I don't not cheeseburger. Three, but yeah, two, sure. one. Nope, nope, yes? no, no. Okay. I'm fine. If you want to put her at C, I'm fine with that. Um, I'm just th- that's the one piece that I'm very much looking forward to. Well, yeah, I feel like totally I'm the only one who too. technically has an opinion of her because apparently I'm the only one who played the mission. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's yeah, fine. you can put her wherever yeah. you want, man. <laughs> we have. I don't know who she is. I didn't even know her name was Kasumi. So she's like a hacker. She's pretty sweet. But uh, grunt the the test tube not so great, Rex. I had a B tier. Yeah, I like Grunt. I, He's solid. I loved Grunt. Tell me I I'm thought wrong. Grunt was a fantastic Tell me why character. I'm wrong, Nate. I, I don't think you're wrong. I think Grunt is Thor. I think he, he didn't have the best movie, but he's the comedic relief. Wait, And uh, eventually you learn to love him. Thor. Oh, Thor. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. He's the comedic relief of the universe, but he's still he's like... so you know, serious that he's funny. Yeah, so, exactly. So I had, I had him at A because when you look at all of the other characters... He he's like the baby of the group, right? Obviously, because he just came out of his little That's cryo <laughs> test tube <laughs> thing. Fight. So again, when I'm thinking about perspectives and how you have, you know, Javik who's like super old, and you have all these other people who are kind of like living in different timelines, and and for 
for Grunt to be like just the baby of the group, but then still look like that, talk like that. Um, and then just him learning about his race and kind of f- like kind of doing that story arc with the, the genophage and everything. Like I, I thought that was a really, really smart choice for them mm-hmm. um, where, you know, you, you keep the Krogan, you keep essentially Rex, but with a, a little bit of a more, I don't know, neutral or like f- forgiving, maybe like a little bit more understanding perspective where right. you have Rex who who lived it so he's very much set in his ways and he's kind of that old grouchy grandpa guy. Yeah. And then here's Grunt where like hey we can be better than you know your like set yeah. Do you think which I thought Grunt was an interesting was specifically made because everybody loved Rex but they really liked the idea for Morden so much that they had to have a reason for Rex not to kill him the first time they met. I mean, regardless, uh, like if, if that's the reason behind it, <laughs> I which I would so. love to see where, He's where got you a little get more that depth from. than that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th- I really like the thing. Like, so this guy's like made in a tube. He's the perfect Krogan. He understands the lineage of the Krogan, but he doesn't give a fuck about all of it. This guy has no purpose. He's like a perfect specimen, but he, like, he's like, why should I care about any of this? It's such an interesting thing. Cause if you remember his mission, the guy, like the scientist who made him is like, this is my legacy. Like, you got to make sure this guy saves the Krogan. And then he wakes up and pins you against the wall. And he's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck about Krogan's man. Like, I don't care about the Genophage. Like, why would I? I didn't. I was made in a tube, man. So his search for purpose is really interesting. I like that stuff. It, like Tyler said, it's a great uh, kind of flip from it, Rex. It, it's right? a twist. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it's something where it still pays into that whole history and that whole like it, it's yes. it just gives you a different perspective and it gives yes. you a, a different twist where they could have been very cliche about it and i think this just added another layer that i, I thought was kind of well received yeah absolutely. i think the bioware reused grunt's character in swotor because the uh very first companion that the sith sorcerer finds is this ugly ass monster that's like an ancient assassin and he also like the the thing I remember about Grunt is the reason like he hangs out with Shepard is because Shepard's stronger than him and he's only gonna like hang out with Shepard as long as Shepard's like basically the the alpha male kind of deal or alpha female. It's it's kind of like that. It's more like Shepard promises him like a suicide mission. He's like, this is gonna be the hardest thing we could possibly do, and he's like, I want to see if I can do it. You know what I mean? Like, this is my purpose. Am I strong enough? to do this that's fair yeah you know what really bugged me about rex is how straight he stood about rex or grunt grunt sorry how straight he stood well he's the perfect krogan he's got perfect posture i mean that's absolutely i mean he's been laying in a cryo too just straight this whole time (laughs) straight as a board (laughs) (laughs) do they have spines i mean i assume yeah i hope so Uh, i mean how does (laughs) (laughs) that's why they need the armor what yeah. about Jack? What is their hump for? Are they are they like camels? Can someone look this up? Is that why they have humps? Uh, I don't think they. I don't think it's just the. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like scouring turtles, the codex. They have like shells. Okay, so uh, grunt B tier, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I can I can concede that if you both have them on a beer tier. What did you have them tied? C. I had a. an A. Oh, you had A, yeah. and we had B. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, th- okay. I really like Grunt. He might move world. up for me. Uh, talking about him a little bit, like I was like, yeah, this guy's great. <clears throat> okay, sorry. I know you're getting eager for uh, Jack here. I just wasn't sure how long we wanted to keep this because it looks we're at like the 54 minute mark, and we Whoops. still have a bunch of characters <laughs> to talk about. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll 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 speed run, and it's kind of a shame because these are like very good the characters, best characters, but they're also they're also pretty well known. So I don't think we'll argue too much on these i uh i had jack at b tier i did as well yeah i think i had her at a tier but i'm okay with b tier just because i I don't know jack's cool i like the concept behind her Mm -hmm. and uh she's like the stereotypical like uh damaged child yeah but you you like her all the same so i think yeah she moved up the most for me from two to three like out of any character like i really loved her character arc where she goes from you know like crazy damaged person to like teacher role model (laughs) it was crazy to see i actually really liked it and it was very believable um so i don't know she might move up for me like thinking about 
all those interactions. So I was like, I really enjoyed that story. Yeah, the only reason I have her at B and not A um, was just because two was so just kind of bounced off her. Um, yeah. Whereas like, okay, yeah, you're you're super angry at the world. Like, I get it. Yeah, it was a lot. Um, and then they they did revamp her at three, and I was like, oh, okay, they, they like. Isn't again, she it's so likable at three? Like, yeah, right. It, and it and that's why I was like, okay, that's that's B tier. I mean, that's really what put her up from. Like, it honestly, almost made me want to like romance her. her you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But she's what great. about Legion, the Lost Robot? Uh, I had him B tier. Um, I had him at B tier as well. I, I think that if if I was going to be like thinking back, I would almost put him at, at A. Like looking how we have this here, um, I feel good about him at A. But if if you guys have him B tier, I, I think B tier is good. I honestly don't remember where I put him, but the more and more I think about him, I also think he's A. It looks like I originally had him in B. So the first time I ever ran through the game, I missed him. Uh, I never booted him up in the <laughs> basement. Oh, yikes! <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I don't, I don't. I. I guess I didn't read it or something. We were getting close to the end, but uh, when I went back, he's he's obviously really awesome. He's interesting, but I don't remember specifically like any specific examples. So I'm really curious. That's why I have him B tier. He probably would be higher. Everyone loves him, right? But so Legion is like the. The the version of the Geth that was like, okay, like we have our freedom, but we don't need to be dicks about it. And he's the the voice of that group that you meet. Because all of the Is he Geth, Geth are, Jesus? No, he's one part of Geth Jesus, I guess. <laughs> one part. Because, well, remember, the Geth are all like a giant hive mind. So they're all like technically one being. Oh, that's right. Isn't he bodies. like the only one who speaks for himself? No, he speaks for a group of them that are. I know, separate. but he can say like I. He's like, uh, isn't that something? No, because he literally introduces himself by saying we are Legion. I like, thought there was a point where he did, but maybe I'm not. Remember. Maybe I think that was his arc. Is you, you had some options there? Where I, as yeah, part of like the big moment was like he announces himself as no. A the big person. moment is he finds a way to go and basically rewrite the enemy Geth and make it so that they all think like him and can join uh I thought they wanted free will join your crew. Well that's but that I think so again we have to think about who's playing this game. I believe that's one of the options. I think there are other paths you can take with him. Oh. Okay. I think. Yeah, I could I be wrong. Again remember. like I'm actually so curious. For me, I always link him with Tally and I, I liked the right, fact right. that you could have two races that are so i mean they were basically just at war yeah. similar to like obviously they, Rex and, they were and literally at war <laughs> yeah right but like having that on your team and and seeing how they interact with each other and stuff is, is what yeah, i thought was compelling I, that's a great point that you bring up i love the friction between characters you get a couple examples of this right you get like uh any krogan well rex in particular and any other race <laughs> you get like uh miranda and jack uh, and then obviously, you know, Italian and, and Legion, right? Like, I always, I always like that friction there with characters that really don't like each other. And then Shepard has to come save the day. Well, I mean, your race creates uh, a robot army that basically makes your life better. That robot army becomes Edie and then destroys your entire way of living and kicks you out into space where you have to live on these junker ships. Uh, yeah. So having to live with y- your superior creation probably would sting a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Remember, Tally commits suicide because of, like, if you side with Legion and you don't have a certain relationship with her. Yeah, you, like, don't, don't you kill the Corgans in that scenario? No. Like, you have to, I'm pretty sure the choice is between both races. I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, you're right. I think there is, there's a way to get both. But you can make like the decision if you rewrite the Geth and make it so that the entire Geth army is on like Legion's page. You can then choose if you want to support the Geth or support the Quarians. Right. And if you choose to support the Geth, you get a larger like boost towards your army. But Tally's like, okay, I'm going to jump off this cliff face first now. <laughs> yeah. 
And uh, but it, the the moral dilemma of like, are you going to enslave a race? Are you going to let them do free? Like it, that's stuff where it's just like, well, yeah, it was insane. So the first time I played my run through, right, I couldn't save them both. I didn't do everything I had to do. So yeah, that was the toughest choice. So while we have tally up as part of this conversation and we kind of talk about her arc and her going from like the kid on like, you know, her, her first time away from home trying to figure out what like life is and running in and basically having to work with like her mortal enemy and the, the literal uh, doom bringers of her race. Where do we put Tally's whole story arc and Tally as a character? So I have her at B, but Sam. then if if you bring into the picture her getting drunk through a straw, <laughs> to me that would almost put her, put her up in A. That's amazing. Um, but in terms of interesting characters and stuff, I, I I had her at B. I think her story's interesting. I agree with you. I don't think she herself is overly interesting. I mean, the so way you my described sister it, and her I was boyfriend like... listened to this. I'm probably like uninvited from the wedding, but. <laughs> Uh, the way you described it, I was like, damn, that's actually like a really great arc. <laughs> I have her B as well, but I just never really l- fell in love with her character like a lot of other people do for some reason. But she is written really well and has a, has a great arc. All right. So Miranda, um, the queen of daddy issues. I really like she's OK. I, I know you had her at S tier, John. Dude, she's my wife, but Ben. I don't know. She's, okay. you. she's my space wife. She's amazing. She's okay. Uh, I think I had her at B, but looking at how you guys are putting these characters in, like I would almost put her at C tier. I right had her at B, like, and I would, I would, I would, I would actually me. do C as well. I mean, did you miss it out, man? <laughs> she's amazing. I love the whole. Well, she's hot. Let's get that out of the way. I mean, I'm I'm fine splitting the, like if 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 you want to get the the S tier up and like so originally I did have her at B so if we want to put her at A I'm fine with that. Um, you can put her at my B. That's is, fine. I mean, I understand why people don't love her, right? But you know, obviously since I romanced her, it was you know I was pretty invested. You had more of a connection for it, yeah. Sure. And she has the whole sister thing. Like I said, I'm like a sucker for that. I love the sibling thing. She like really cares about her sister. Uh, her dad's a dick. I like that whole thing and her dealing with like always being the best. And then she resurrects this guy who's literally the best. And she has to like watch that and, you know, be okay with that. <laughs> it's like pretty interesting. Cause she like hates you at first. Yeah. I, I think the reason why I, I liked her was because she did have the in with like the elusive man. And like that, that's where it kind of, like she was that missing piece. So like she was the the missing gap between Mass Effect One, Mass Effect Two, yeah. and and she's, she basically she, shepherds you into yeah. that. So she's the whole reason that's good that for works. Me. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But yeah, I'm fine with so, being. Mean, you guys clearly don't like her as much, which is fine. That is your Mister. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I, I put more nest here. Wouldn't say he doesn't give a fuck. I would. I would say he gives a. A lot of fucks, actually. But yeah, he's still What are you sick. talking about, man? Like, yes, he cares. He Real quick, feels... we, we are talking about Morden. We didn't really specify that the uh, yeah, right. <laughs> they just moved up. <laughs> for, but, uh, for those of people who can't see. Oh, um, gotta figure it out. But Morden feels bad about what he did, but he also stands by what he did at the time. And if, like, he has to murder a bro to get whatever he needs to done, he has no remorse. He murders said bro. He doesn't care that he's, yeah, you know, yeah. weak. Absolutely he's got, he's got big brain on his guy. side. You have such a horrible read. He is just analytical. He he thinks about what the best possible, possible outcome is for everyone, right? So, like, he thinks that the Jenna phase is right. But this weighs on him. You can see that, like, this decision crushes him on the inside. Like, he has to make these decisions. Like, if you were to go up to this guy and be like, oh, you just don't give a shit, like, this is easy for you to make these decisions. He would like fucking punch you in the face. Like these decisions. Yeah, it's not are to say so he doesn't make the decision, me. but it, it does give you a little bit. Like it's just it, it comes off cold just because of his character. Right. But that's right. part of the reason. Like just like how we liked Thane and how he delivered his lines. That's why I thought Morden was amazing. Was just because he delivered his lines in a very like you know alien way. If that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. he, he was true to the, right. the that species, and I thought it was fantastic. Absolutely, yeah, it was a great performance and a great arc. 
But I think he definitely cares about like what he does for sure. I just think he is super but analytical see, about it, so it comes across it, as like he doesn't care. He's technically both the oldest and the youngest character on your team for this, right? Because Wait, he's like eighteen or something like that, and their race lives to like the early twenties. Like they're like flies compared to the other races in the Mass Effect universe. So sure it's that Morden's young. that's crazy. Yeah. What what is he, a Solarian or something like that? Yeah, yep. I thought it was at least like How 50. do you how can you forget that song, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I think uh, I mean obviously like which I think we mentioned on the last podcast, like he, he does sacrifice himself. And I think that alone is enough where it's like, that's such a huge moment. That's such a, like a tear jerking, like, Oh my gosh, like big epic sacrifice type of thing where I wonder how many of these other characters had, they had like the same, uh, like send off, if you will, like, would they get put up higher? Like, are we putting him up there just because he did have that dramatic scene? No, possibly, but that, that, I mean, it's, no, I don't think. I think it's it, very, very on meaningful cake, in my that. opinion. I think the way he's written, like you said, the song, dude, puts him in S tier, like already. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's so many memorable, memorable uh, scenes with him and dialogue, and you know he's so funny at points, and then he's just so well done. I mean, the voice acting. So the, I looked it up, and I don't remember how old Morden was, but it looks like their race. It's rare to live over forty years of age. Okay. And it's due to their high metabolism. Their body ages and decays faster. Interesting. So split the difference between both of our answers. But that's why they always, that's why he talks so fast and stuff. Like that's a thing of their race. Yeah, they super, do everything yeah, quickly. Yeah. And they're super high And then that's also, yeah. like that's also, so like they had, um, I don't know if you guys watched Silicon Valley, whoever plays the Nash, I, for, I forget the actor's name, but he does the voice of the Solarian in Andromeda. But he does not do it the same way Ooh. that the voice actor played I'll be honest with Morgan. you, I did not get far enough in a drama to know that there was a It was literally in the, in the first, like, 20 minutes, maybe. It, it just, it wasn't great. Like, I like that that actor. I think he does a really good job in that. But as a voice actor for a Solarian, does not fit. And and it's stuff like that that Morden really crafted that race in that, just that species was so well done from that voice actor that it ruined <laughs> all other yeah, like how do you, you know that? versions <laughs> of that of that character and it's just but you see I, I mean, Morden, yeah. you're like that's a solarian like there it right. is perfectly all right. right so we're sitting in an hour and six minutes all right um, last guy our last one is rex and personally I, I put rex in the a tier he is like the badass dad that you always wanted uh yep i put him in s tier He's amazing. I fucking love him. He's so, he's such a realist about the galaxy. He's like been through it. He is a dick, but he's like my very sensible. favorite scene is whenever you meet him on like the Krogan homeworld or whatever, and he's like the warlord, and like you walk in and somebody challenges him, and he just walks up and straight up headbutts the dude and throws him to the ground. He's like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> yeah, it was so good. He's he's great. I, I love how much he cares about the Krogans too. Like he's such a yeah. passionate guy. Like he just wants what's best for his people. And uh, I remember like one scene you're talking to like some Krogan mercenary, there's like a million of them. And he just like rips into this guy, I think, and it's just like what are you doing, man? Like you know what I mean? I, I forget the scene, but He's so good. I mean, I had him at I had him in A tier. I mean, to be fair, I had both him and Grunt at A tier. Um, I think Grunt is a more interesting character personally. Um, that's not to say that Rex as a character is not awesome. Like, I mean, he obviously made a, a huge impression in the first game, and I thought that was right. fantastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I, for everything you guys just said, like, I, I think he's great. I just uh, I feel like he's a little bit more one note. That's not to say that's bad. Like sometimes you need that, yeah. but I just given think all the complexities and everything, sure. I just think he's like the Morden of the Krogan. Like you just like this is. I envision a Krogan. It's Rex. You know what I mean? It's the same kind of thing, in, in my opinion. So, if now now let's say this is going back to the decision we had or the conversation we had about Grunt, where I said that 
they couldn't let you keep Rex because if he met Morden, he would have killed Morden. Rex is all about the Krogans and he's really pissed off about the Genophage, right? Yeah. And I think there is like a point where he finds out that Morden had a hand in it and they work together to kind of like help resolve it. Yeah. But if Rex was in your party the moment you met Morden, do you think Morden has a place in Mass Effect for the remainder of that if you do not speak to Rex in a very calm way that basically like tells him like he's going to die if he doesn't you know leave morden alone and or do you have to kill rex to keep morden going in that campaign if they have rex as a playable character whenever you meet him can you rephrase the question (laughs) yeah does if rex and morden met the very first time shepherd met morden and you learn that he created the genophage does rex act as an angry, you know, person, uh, like an angry Krogan, uh, or does he act as a straight up murderous, like I need vindication, Krogan? I mean, I think, I think he acts how he acted uh, when you had to put him down if you went that route, you know. Yeah, but here's the thing: if he's alive in two, when you meet Morden, obviously you talked him out of a cure, a potential cure for the Genophage. So, um, I would think you could do it again. Uh, yeah time. i just i don't know i i feel like i think he'd be pissed. that was part of the reason yeah. for grunt but also i it's been so long since i've played them like it's it's been what 10 years like i was in high school at the time yeah, these games was, came what did we out. say 2007 yeah it's been been it's been since like i played this on xbox 360 that i've played one of these games from start to finish so it's been 10 years since I've played this. So the fact that a lot of these characters are stuck in my head as well as they did that's, for as long good. as they have is both scary and pretty cool because <laughs> it's the impact that like the storytellers like, you know, really have on you. Yeah. But I, uh, I, I could very well be misremembering a ton of stuff. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I know for a fact some of, the, some of the scenes that will stick with me forever, like Liara using Benezia's threat. <laughs> but, I never put that together. I'm actually excited to see that scene now that's really cool i'm excited to see how how these move i think we have a good list here um and i know we're actually running up on time but let's say we give this to an hour 15 minutes so we're at an hour 12 uh we got three minutes let's run through the tier list real quick and just put everybody in order you know left or right the way you wanted to and i'm assuming our s tier with garris morden is yeah that's set everybody's yeah. cool yep. with it i think that's good a tier Liara, Thane, um, Legion, Miranda, Rex. I would honestly have Miranda at the end of this list. And I would, as much as I love Liara, I know she was lower on your guys' list. I would probably put her behind Rex. Would you put Thane in front of Rex or not? I would not. Um, I, I would not. It, I, I think I'm happy with Liara. how you have it there. I would too, but I, knowing that Nate had Liara in S tier. I would, I would, yeah, I would put her second. Up. I think that's fine. All right. So Wait, to confirm our A tier. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Miranda, I feel <laughs> less strongly. <laughs> <laughs> to confirm our A tier, it's then Rex, Liara, Thane, Legion, and Miranda in that order. Yeah. All right. B tier: Javik, Samara, Slash, Morinth, Grunt, uh, Jack, and wow tally i uh i think tyler loved grunt enough that grunt deserves to be up here somewhere i think you guys disliked more than samara enough that she should be back there and i I feel like we like tally but we don't like tally we like tally's race and the story that she brings to us so i think these are the three that we would kind of have towards the forefront in what order would we put these three in I think it looks pretty good. I mean, I'm I mean, honestly I have... fine how you have it. Like, I, yeah. I could flip flop on on Grunt and Javik, yeah. but I, I do. The more exactly we talk about Grunt, the more I'm like, man, I can't I wait know, to meet right? him again. I was just talking about some of these characters. I'm like, wait, this is this is so good. Yeah, I like right. how it looks. So B tier is Grunt, Javik, Jack, Tally, Samara slash Morinth. C tier, uh, Kaden, Ashley, Zaid, and Kitsumi. 
Kitsumi's obviously last because you guys are uh, it doesn't matter where uh, you put her. unaware of her Maybe story. Yeah. <laughs> I, her. I hate Saeed, but not more than I hate Ashley and not more than I hate uh, Kaden. Dude, as long as Vega's last, I don't care. Yeah, At the end of the this, day, if you have if you have uh, Garrus, it won. Yeah. Yeah. Does it matter so, at this so point? So C-tier, <laughs> Kaden, Ashley, Zaid, Kitsumi. We have 30 seconds and we're on D-tier which is Jacob, Edie, and Vega currently. We know Vega is staying at the end. Does Edie beat out Jacob for the first spot of D tier for either of you? Sure. Uh, for me, absolutely. Yeah, sure. All right. Confirm D, Edie, Jacob, and Vega. So here is our snapshot, and I will take a screen grab of this. Awesome. All right, that's good stuff, man. I'm super excited for it. Um, we got 11 hours, boys, and then we get to uh, go to work go and to not work, play though. the game. <laughs> well, fair yeah, that's a good point. All right, man. Great, uh, great talk. I'm really excited. Uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition drops tomorrow at 9 a.m. I guess so. Really yeah, excited. I swear this isn't a Mass Effect podcast for. <laughs> For yeah, our first few episodes it will be. Of hey course, man, you gotta but, start uh, with what you're good at, right? We'll, we'll, what you know. <laughs> play some, <laughs> play some new stuff. to get started. You know what I did realize though. You know, since I missed the first podcast, I did take you know some time to uh, give it a listen, and I, I feel that Perez forgot to mention uh, our sponsor. Oh uh, yeah, this episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Um, if you're ever roaming the galaxy and you need to learn how to do some things like calibrate a cannon. Like our great fan friend in S tier, visit Skillshare. dot com. Promo code. You know, I thought you were gonna bring up something about a dollar for the Xbox Game Pass, but uh, I I missed it, man. I was. <laughs> I know Tyler was Tyler's go to on Skillshare. So uh, that's what I yeah, did. <laughs> I know Phil Spencer's calling me now. I gotta. All right. All right. Well, I gotta go, boys. He's gonna, he's he's angry, but <laughs> I'll see you guys later. All right. We'll see you next time.